This is Library Nerds with Words, the podcast that gives you the word on all the cool, nerdy happenings at Peter White Public Library and the library universe beyond. From books and concerts to search engines and story times, the library nerds are in and ready to show you that being a nerd can be cool. Get ready. Get set. Get nerdy. Welcome back to Library Nerds with Words, the podcast that gives you the latest word on all the cool things happening at Peter White Public Library and the library universe beyond from the people who know it best, library nerds. I'm Marty Atkins, Adult Programming Coordinator for Peter White Public Library. And joining me today in the nerd studios are everyone's two favorite nerd fellas, um, Amanda Pierce from the Teen Zone and Ben Sargent from Tech Services. Welcome back to the podcast, Amanda and Ben. Thanks, Marty. Good to be back. <laughs> and, you know, I'm always excited to be able to sit down with you guys and get nerdy about movies. In fact, you might say that every episode that you guys appear on is a home run. Ooh. Oh, yes, that is a clue as to what we're going to be talking about today. Now, it's hard to believe that it's almost May. Pretty soon, summer programming and schedules are going to be kicking into high gear, including summer reading programs. Summer is the Super Bowl for readers at the and library nerds. Another clue. But before our main event, I'm just doing this, you know. <laughs> just keep going. Just keep going. Mm-hmm. We have to play another round of Word on the Nerd, the game where I find out a little bit more about my guest nerds. Now, you both know how this goes. I'm going to ask you three library nerd questions about yourselves, and you have to answer them for the listeners. So, Amanda and Ben, are you ready to play? Word on the Nerd. All right, this is going to be another game of Would You Rather. I'm going to ask you three Would You Rather questions, and you have to truthfully answer them for the listeners. And all of the questions today have something to do with various sports. Okay. All right. They're good. So, (laughs) can't wait. So, here's your first question. Would you rather run a Muppet Marathon dressed as Gonzo the Great, or would you rather play on a baseball team where all of the uniforms are costumes from the musical cast? I knew it! I knew you were going to do that! (laughs) Jeez, this is hard. Gonzo! 100% I'll run a marathon. But do you really want to run a marathon? I don't think I could run a marathon. I mean, you you train for it, obviously. Okay, if I had the proper training, whatever, then I would do the Gonzo Marathon. You'd go to Gonzo. Heck yeah! Let's go to the great with the cape. See, I'm going with the cat's costumes because I don't think I want to train. That's a cursed <laughs> image. Just mm-hmm. them cr- like crawling on the infield. Yes. You know, they catch a ball and they start playing with it, oh, batting Jesus. it around. Oh, God, no, Marty. <laughs> Let's move on. All right. We'll go. The, well, you know, the questions get a little harder. All right. So here's okay. your second one. Would you rather watch a movie biopic starring Ryan Gosling as Hulk Hogan? Or watch a movie biopic starring Daniel Day-Lewis as Pete Rose. Whoa. No, I, I, hands down, Ryan Gosling as Hulk Hogan. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. It would, be, would be so really funny. Good. <laughs> Daniel, on, Day-Lewis, Daniel Day-Lewis as Pete Rose. But he's just so serious. Yeah, I know, but he can play anything. I know. Yeah. But like, I mean, come on, Hulk Hogan biop? <laughs> come on, come Hulk on. Hulk Hogan's a terror. he's a terrible person. Well, he is a terrible person, but Ryan Gosling could... It would be hilarious. It'd him. be like Ken meets, like, this wrestling <laughs> mashup. It would, it would be... So that would be really entertaining to watch. Mm-hmm. And Daniel Day-Lewis Yeah, I know, that's Pete a really Rose. tough one. Um, just him, just... Life in shambles, gambling. Yeah, um, you know, addiction, whatever, gambling addiction. I feel so. like the more entertaining movie would be the Gosling Hogan one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Game to the Lewis one, people would be like, ooh, it's boring. But I would love it. Yeah. I guess I would say Gosling because that's my boy. All right. Gosling for you? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Daniel Day Lewis. I want to see Daniel Day Lewis as Pete Rose. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Um, but Daniel Day Lewis as anybody is good. So. You could have said Daniel Day Lewis as Hogan. <laughs> yeah, you could have. He'd make right. it work somehow. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here's your last question. Would you rather go to a Super Bowl where Roseanne Barr sings the national anthem? God. Or would you rather wait, go to a wait. Super Bowl where Gilbert Gottfried sings the national anthem? I would say Gilbert Gottfried because that would be that's... more ironically funny. <laughs> he would just be a Yago. It, it would yeah. be a Yago. See, and I would go with Gilbert Godfrey, too, yep. because we all know what Roseanne Barr sounds like singing the National mm-hmm. Anthem. 
So no, Gilbert Godfrey and like all the voice stuff he's done would just be hilarious. It would be rest in, rest in peace, Gilbert Godfrey. So, mm-hmm. but um, if we in the in the perfect world, the next Super Bowl, Gilbert Godfrey would be singing the national anthem. So anyway. Nice. All right. Well, those were a lot easier than I thought they were going to be. Because mm-hmm. none of the choices were so... Sometimes you make them just terrible. I know like, I do. You say the answer. Which one was the worst one? The cats. The cats, the cats one. one? Yeah. Okay. All right. But sometimes they're just too... You know, you just well, feel I bad had, about yourself. I had... I see. This one would have been so easy for you guys because I had... In the original question, I had Mariah Carey up against you, oh. know, you know who. My girl. Carrie under and okay, I, uh, Carrie, oh, Carrie, Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson. So now I know that you would have gone with Mariah. You would have gone with Mariah. I would have gone with mm. Kelly. They for, both would be good though because they both can anthem, sing. They're all good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. not a little lose. Anyway, all right. Well, there you go. That is the end of this sporty edition of Word on the Nerd uh, with Ben from Tech Services and Amanda from the Teen Zone here at Peter White Public Library. And now the time has come to talk movies. In particular, if you haven't guessed already, we are focusing our attention on sports films, from boxing to hockey to baseball. Um, So why don't we get into... The Word. All right, Amanda and Ben, it's time to play ball. Um, and we got to talk about the cheeses and everything first. And hold on, hold on. Yes. Before we start, I got a question yes. for you, Marty. Yes. Is this heaven? <laughs> oh, God. No, it's Upper Michigan. <laughs> 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 oh my god, we got to go the distance with this one though. Yeah, okay. If you build it, it, it he will come. come. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's <laughs> just over here looking at it. Why don't you tell us about the cheeses that okay, we have? I, See, yeah. Now, See, Amanda has learned the cheeses. Amanda now knows the kryptonite for both I Ben do. and myself. There's so. no scary ones for Marty today. Yes. Not yet. <laughs> I didn't have any. Packaged up. Amanda has learned that I have a uh, thing against pickles. I just can't do pickles. So. And now he's so understanding. He's like, <laughs> Ben, you don't have to eat that cheese. No, I'm not forcing Please him to don't. eat the soft cheeses. No, absolutely not. Wow. Funny how that works. <laughs> Terrible. Because I don't want to be forced to eat some disgusting green vinegary oh, pickle. So, but they're so good. No. The ones that the ones that you can get at everyday wine, they're just like mm. they're do like they have like special pickles? They do. They're like an inch big and they're really skinny. <laughs> and like they, little gherkins? Yeah, they're not I don't know if they're what they're I don't even know. They're just they come in this big old jar and David's like, we should just buy a jar and I'm like, I would sit there and eat the entire jar in like two yeah. days. I would no. try a pickle like a, They're so good. No. No, oh, Marty. It's not going to happen. You can do that all you Shut want. It's still not going to do but it. It's so, <laughs> I'm going to I am going to find one You're, of these days, I'm going to find a cheese, and it's going to look like a safe cheese, and we're all going to try the cheese, and it will be a pickle cheese. I feel like you'd be able to tell a pickle cheese. I, I think you could, just by I the do, smell. But, mm, mm. She's going to poison the cheese. I'm not going to poison the cheese. <laughs> okay, so what kind of cheeses do we have here? Um, So, we have two scaries and one safe. One, That's yep. how we're going to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, So, probably this, I don't know, which one do you find more scary, Ben? This one or this one? They're equally scary. <laughs> Which one do you think is more scary? This crumbly blue cheese. It just, okay. it so basically. We'll save that one for last. So it our, disintegrated when she it took it out of the. Right. It's so good. It just melts in your mouth. Okay. So our first, the safe cheese, is the Prairie Breeze cheddar um, from the Milton Creamery. It's like a nice, sharp cheddar. It's got like, little crystals in it. It cuts really nice. It's really and it just, good. Really smooth. Mm-hmm. Very safe. Very safe. Very yes. solid, dependable, very solid, dependable, reliable cheese. Yeah. 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 All right, so you could eat that with almost anything. And it hey, and I've got anything. a baguette. We have the, the mm-hmm. baguettes from Zephyr. That's where they're made. Yep. And then we got some olives to go with it. Those are delicious, too. Um, so then the next one is um, the Monte Inerbro. In it, I can't. My, 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 the. Monte, it's Monte Enebro. Yep. It is oh, it's a, from Spain. It's a, yep, it's a Spanish cheese. Spanish cheese. It's a soft, ripened goat's milk cheese with a rind that is blue. Mm. It looks awful, but... No, it is delicious. It's a Spanish cheese. It sits there and goes, hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Monte. It's Monte. Oh, okay. It's right. Monte. Prepare to die. Uh, prepare, prepare to, to die. die. If Ben eats and that, then, he might die. Yeah. Yes. So, see... <laughs> Um, 
And then the last one we have is a blue cheese, and they just got this one in, and I saw it on their Instagram, and I had to go get it. Mm. Um, it's a smoky blue from the Rogue Creamery in Oregon, and it, it is, is cold smoked over hazelnut shells. It's really good. It is so good. It m- melts in your mouth. Like, you put it in there, it just... M- and it has a, a definite funky aftertaste, mm-hmm. too, which is I don't nice. like the way it's looking at me. Well, and see, here's the thing. It says penicillin in it. I'm allergic to penicillin, and I'm still eating it. Wow. It's fine. Yeah, don't you You're walking that. on the edge here. See, she... Oh, you, you people. <laughs> the faces I'm making, I am so happy right now, and Ben is just like, oh. Yeah, it, that, well, the, the, the unsafe cheeses are very close to Ben. I there can't. are no pickles around, so I'm happy. Yeah, there's um, no scary ones for Marty. <laughs> but no, the olives are the... Um, they're Gordel olives. So good. Oh, they're just so good. And if you shove some blue cheese in there... Mm. Yes. All right. So it's time to start talking movies. Um, so how are we going to do this? I just you know say how we didn't do. pick a football movie. No, we didn't. Um, David was very upset that we didn't do Rudy. 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 So, <laughs> well, look. Really? Well, so, okay. I like remember the Titans. That I, I do, Rudy. too. I yeah, mean, Any I Given Sunday yeah. is better. Um, Rudy, Friday Night Lights. Yeah, I mean, the thing about Rudy is it's pretty much boring until the end. Yeah. Um, but we could, I mean, so there's so many to choose from. It was really hard to narrow it down. Mm-hmm. We're going to do more. We're going to do another We're going to do episode. another sports edition. So We're doing you, comedy sports next, though. Yeah, we can do funny ones. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. But, you know, so we've got two basketball movies. We have two baseball movies. We have a boxing movie. We have a hockey movie. And all really good. Yeah. But there's one that stands head and shoulders yeah. above the crowd That's here. That's true. That's why this episode is titled... Why is it... What, the title of this episode will be, Marty... <laughs> Field of Dreams and Its Greatness. That's the title I of it. I feel like standing up right now. Yeah, no, I know. No. We should give it a standing ovation. And this is... I will say that since we started talking about doing this one, this... This, this movie. We talked about this podcast, I think, way more, more than any other one we have. Yep. Because there's... Um, we had to hit, we have to have an intervention with this one because there are some people who do not like Field of Dreams. I know. Pick yourselves up the, off the floor, listeners. There are actually people that don't like Field of monsters. Dreams. Monsters. Monsters. Uh, they are monsters. There's something clinically, psychiatrically wrong with people. You know who else didn't like Ooh. Field of Dreams? Jeffrey Dahmer. Pro- oh, well, probably. That, oh, that, probably. That makes sense. Probably. Yeah, probably. I feel like that's a safe assumption, yeah, Marty, wouldn't I you? I think that is a very safe assumption, you know. Um, you know, John Wayne Gacy's last words were, I hate Field of Dreams. Yeah. You know, it hadn't come of, out yet, but he hated it. <laughs> and he still hated it. <laughs> Jack the oh, Ripper. Man. Oh, come on. Yeah. So, <clears throat> if you don't like Field of Dreams, you're in, uh, interesting company. <laughs> but anyway. Let's, okay, just, all right. We're going to start with this. Yes. Because it is the title of this podcast. Yes. As it should be. <laughs> this movie. Mm-hmm. Is literally perfect. It really is. It can't be. Oh, um, it. <laughs> I. This is one of my favorite movies ever. One of my mom's. Um, we're big baseball people. Mm-hmm. Big baseball fan. Um, it's just so. I don't even. It's just so great in every possible way. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin Costner, yeah. James Earl Jones, Amy Madigan. Yeah, Ray Liotta. Timothy Busfield. Ray Liotta, Timothy Busfield. I mean... Burt Lancaster. Burt, I mean, God. He's so cool in this. Yeah, he's so cool. I bow down to Burt Lancaster. He is so good. So... Um, And Amanda's just sitting there biting her tongue. It's it's not that I don't think it's a great movie. Okay. Explain yourself. It is a really good movie. It is about a guy's building this field to have closure with his father. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's about dreams. Yeah, but it's not, to me, the game's not, it's not about baseball. baseball. Well, interesting you say that. Cause because Marty, it's, it's all about him trying to make amends but, with his father. No, the, the baseball's uh, in it, no, but no. it's a side character. I, I, I full agree. I, I, we will agree with you. But I here's mean. the thing. Yes. And here's the thing about all sports movies. This one in particular, mm-hmm. but all of them. They're not actually about sports. No, I, I get that, but I wanted more sports. And Rocky, then not, go see a baseball game. See, th- that's the thing. Like, Rocky, it's not about boxing. No, it's, it's not. not. About boxing. It's, they're not. I forgot about how 
lackluster boxing is in that movie. Every every sports movie you ever saw isn't actually about sports. It's always a metaphor for something else. Right. And sports is just the thing that they use to tell that story. Mm-hmm. Okay? Feel the Dreams, same thing. Baseball is this connection that he has with his family that other people have. I think, like, you know, baseball is, like, the most romantic of the sports. Yeah. And, um... You know, it's should we? I mean, have people not seen this? Should we tell say what it's about? I mean, I think I I I mean mean, it's about my my kids have not seen it yet because we watched David and I watched it late at later at night. Madison plays ball. uh, Madison, we all watched League of Their Own together as a family because Mm -hmm. yeah, that movie and Sandlot are the two sports movies in our house. Okay. All right, we'll and do Rocky. we'll do Sandlot next time. Yeah, I like Sandlot and we did do Field. Of, we did do A League of Their Own for this one. Mm-hmm. So, yes, um, those are our sports movies. But yeah, I think like families gonna. It's like Christmas movies where you're like, this is ours. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing about Feel the Dreams is it's just so. I'm not a crier. I don't cry at any movie. I don't mm-hmm. cry in books. I don't cry barely, like ever. Mm-hmm. This is the one. Well, there's a couple of exceptions, but this is one movie where there are a few times in this where I'm like, it gets you right. I was <laughs> maybe a month and a half ago. I was here on a Saturday by myself downstairs, and I put this on to watch it for the podcast. I mean, I've seen it so many times, mm-hmm. and it still gets me. Just the part there's couple of parts the part where moonlight graham he gets in the young moonlight graham that he gets into the game and you know he gets the sack fly and then which was his dream Mm -hmm. was his dream just to get an an official at bat right that's That's what he wanted wanted. and (laughs) the little girl starts choking and everyone which was the uncle's fault it, it yeah. was the uncle's fault. Timothy and, Busfield's kind of an uh, bad person. Ooh, I almost oh, swore. Whoa. Oh, wow. He was a dick. Yeah. He's a jerk. Can we say that? Yes, I, I think you can. can say dick. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like medical. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I won't bleep that out then. I could say worse. No, you want me to he, say worse? That's okay. But yes. But I'm sitting here destroying the cheese. So, yeah, going for that safe cheese. <laughs> I like this because this cheese is like a base. Yes, mm-hmm. it looks like a like a baseball base. Um, so, starts choking. So, Moonlight Graham was a doctor. The whole backstory of Moonlight Graham is he was a young ball player. He got called up from the minors for one game. Didn't get in a bat. Got sent down. Never got to play again. Became a doctor. And, um, like, changed the whole town's life. Yeah, like, the most important person in this small town in mm-hmm. Minnesota. And he. Everyone looks at him, and he knows he goes to, like, run off the field to, save to the help her, girl. and he stops at the threshold. Because the confines of the field is a magical place. Right. And, and he just is like. And then he find And when he. When he. This is young Moonlight Graham. When he crosses that threshold. He turns back into old Burt Lancaster. Yeah. He, like, slaps her on the back, and he's just like, piece of hot dog, you yeah. know? <laughs> Burt Lancaster sounds so cool in this movie, too. <laughs> because, and then, like, it's like Kevin Costner realizes, like, you can't go back. He's like, oh, my God, you can't go back. Like, and everyone is like, and he's like, it's okay. You know, I, this, I did what I came to do. And it's mm-hmm. so, when he stops... I sent you guys a picture of it. I was watching yeah. it. When he stops at the thing, and it's just like, oh my god! Like he finally made it, and now, yeah, this has been his dream. But like, this whole movie is about dreams. Like, what will you do to achieve your dream? What mm-hmm. would make you give up on your dream? Like, all that. And then he's got to go. Like he's like, it's okay. I love it because he's like, I gotta get back anyway, or Alicia's gonna think I got a girlfriend. Yeah. He always <laughs> he always goes back to his wife, Alicia. I mean, he had I, he had. Not as part of baseball, but he had an amazing life. Changed yeah. the whole town. Helped so many people out. And mm-hmm. I, and it it's like getting choked up because he's walking through the players because he's going to go back out to the outfield through the cornfield. And like that's like the cornfield is like the light at the end of the tunnel. Right. It's yeah. like um, – and all the ball players, they all just tip their cap and they say, thanks, Doc. Good mm-hmm. job, Doc. Mm-hmm. You were good, Doc. Yeah. You know. And then before he gets to the edge of the cornfield, he says – Win one for me, boys. Win and one then for he me. Walks away. <laughs> so cool. Oh, he's so cool in this movie. <laughs> old Old Burt Lancaster is so cool. Again, um, it's a good movie. And it's then just... the other part, I know which one you're going to say, chokes you out because it gets me every time. Is where 
uh, Kevin Costner has been struggling with this relationship with his father. He's been dead, died before, like right after he got married. Yeah, never, never got to meet his the kid. granddaughter or anything like that. And so he, Kevin Costner is getting these magical messages from a voice. First one is if if you build it, he will come. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The next one is I think go the distance. Go the distance. Yeah. And then um, the third message Moonlight. is is heal his pain. Is yeah. It? yeah. Mm-hmm. Heal, heal his, his pain. pain. And he saw like the moonlight. Well, like, but before that, so he so he gets it in his head. He's got to go to Boston to meet Terrence Mann. Yep. Terrence Mann is like this author. It's supposed to be J.D. Salinger. Right. In the book, it it's was J.D. In Salinger. Book, in the book, it was Salinger. But they couldn't make that, you know, whatever. They make Terrence Challenger Mann. Challenger threatened to sue yeah. them. <laughs> so James Earl Jones, he's so good in this. Yeah. But James, My babe, no, no, we got to talk about the part where his wife is at the PTA meeting, which is a school board meeting. Such a good, they're going, banning books in that's there. Whole, like, that's books. my favorite part of the entire movie. Yeah. She just gets up and she just goes off on this woman. I'm like, I, oh my, my God, I want to do that. Hers. I want to do that someday. Yeah, well, my favorite line of hers in that <laughs> meeting is where where um, the, the woman that she's up against says... Well, at least I'm not, I didn't plow under my crop, the weirdo. And then she goes, She and then Amy Madigan steps up and Kevin Costner tries to stop her. And she's like, it's all right, honey. I got, I got it. it. I got it. I got and got she stands it. up and she goes, well, at least I'm not a book burner, you Nazi cow. Oh. And I'm like, oh. wow. Best, best part of the movie, hands down. <laughs> but they're trying to ban Terrence's book. Man's book. book. Yeah, and that's was... how he comes to realize that he needs to go get Terrence. And, yep. and Terrence Mann had been like retired at this point, secluded. He doesn't want to be He doesn't want to be a symbol anymore. He right? just wants to write his software and be left alone. Yes. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Kevin Costner goes... Terrence Mann. In a hilarious scene, he like has to kidnap him because he had read an article that Terrence Mann had always dreamed to be a baseball player. Yeah. And he was a Brooklyn Dodgers fan, and this was before they tore down Abbott's Field. Yep. And that was his dream that he never got to achieve. So he's like, I just have to take Terrence Mann to a baseball game. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite scenes, too. He takes first. He kidnaps him. He pretends he has a gun in his pocket. And he's like, he's like "That's I'm... your finger." And then he, Terrence Mann's like, "I'm gonna hit," and he's like, "You're a pacifist." Yeah, I can't do it. I just love him. He's like, "You're kidnapping me." <laughs> um, so he takes him. They watch this Red Sox game, and on the scoreboard, it flashes Moonlight, Moonlight Graham. Graham. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and. And James Earl Jones just doesn't see anything. So he's like, "This is all for nothing. It's been a waste of time." One of my favorite scenes in the movie. He takes Terrence Mann back. He's really sorry. I'm sorry I kidnapped you. I thought I'm just I'm actually crazy. And he drops Terrence Mann off at his apartment and he's like and then it's like at night. He backs the car off, he goes to pull into the road. James Earl Jones is in the middle of the right road here. and he just says Moonlight Graham. Graham. Yeah. And he's like, You saw it. <laughs> you saw it too. And he's mm-hmm. like, We have to go to Minnesota. So now he's on board. Yep. But what I was saying, the the scene kind of in the movie is just at the end right when um when so terrence mann gets to go through the cornfield right, and he, kevin costner is he's pissed well because he's like oh, i built Sorry, it and it's, no, that's and, it's, and it's like you know it's not your time and whatever <laughs> and we have got to shout out ray liotta shula joe jackson just yeah it's one of ray so Liotta's. Good. It's a small part but it's if you so haven't good. seen this movie they build this they plow the cornfield to build a baseball field and like then full the, on like stadium lights and everything. And these dead baseball players come through it and just play, and mm-hmm. it's like famous one. And Shoeless Joe Jackson was Ray. I uh, was Ray. Um, yeah, uh, Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta, and it was um, it was Kevin Costner's father's favorite mm-hmm. baseball player. Yeah, and if you don't know the backstory with the Black Sox, mm-hmm. so Shoeless Joe Jackson in 1919 World Series, the Chicago White Sox. Uh, we're in the World Series, and a bunch of the players took money to throw the game, and um, there were eight of them. There's also a really good sports movie called Eight Men Out. It's a great movie. It's so yeah, underrated. John Cusack, yeah, so good. Charlie, um, Charlie Sheen's mm-hmm. in it. Um, David Strathairn is in it. Um, like all really young. It's in mm-hmm. from the eighties. But so these eight of these players got banned, and Shoeless Joe Jackson was one of them, and he was one of the best of all time. He got a lifetime ban. He could never play again. But it was never proven that he 
he took well they gave him money money, but he didn't do it he didn't do it he was the best player in the series he batted like 340 something Mm -hmm. and then there was also like evidence where like you know he was kind of development disabled he didn't actually understand what was happening with everyone Mm -hmm. the reason why they did it if you watch eight men out they just the team at the time was owned by charlie comiskey and he was just an absolute piece of crap like he just screwed them over and wouldn't pay them so like and they were like the best team in baseball and they were getting nothing so not that you should bet on baseball don't do that <laughs> but as Pete, Pete Rose, as Pete Rose yeah <laughs> what happened to the one guy which guy the interpreter for the guy from Hello. oh yeah yeah Shohei Otani's interpreter yeah mm-hmm. yeah millions just, mm-hmm. yeah just yesterday the NBA lifetime banned a player because they caught him betting on ba- betting on his own games, Ooh. and one yeah, and one that he played in that he pretended he was sick and when it was Ooh. yeah it was yeah huge scandal. So mm. you're gonna get this more now because sports betting is legal. Mm-hmm. You know every sports game you watch now is sponsored by a betting a bookie. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's crazy. Um, so, anyways, Shoeless Joe has always been like a tragic figure. That, Sheila's Show is the name of the book that this is based yeah. on by W.P. Kinsella. It's a great book. Yeah, I've not read it. I've always wanted to. Part of me is like, what if it's not as good as the movie? It's different yeah. because J.D. Salinger is in it and all that. So. Yeah. But, so, long story short, Ray Liotta plays Sheila's Joe and, like, you know, at the end, like, Terrence Mann goes to the cornfield and the players, they're, like, done for the night. And he just says, if you build it, he will come. And it goes to this young young guy taking the catcher mm-hmm. gear off. And he's like, oh, my God, that's Kevin Costner's dad. He came yeah. to the mm-hmm. corner field. Now, he was a like a minor league player who who be, it's I think it's just hinted at that, like he had to stop his career because Kevin Costner was born. Mm-hmm. Right. So like and Ke- there and they like always tussled and kevin costner said i never forgave him for being old and all this mm-hmm. but he sees so he had lots of unresolved dad issues mm-hmm. and he sees I think him that's part of my problem i don't like movies like that either <laughs> see but like he you know he sees him he talks to him and he's like you catch a good game and he's like he says like is this heaven and he's like it's iowa no it's iowa <laughs> and he's like god it feels like heaven and then he's about to go, and he goes, "Hey, Dad, want to want to have a catch?" I read a story where Kevin Costner read the script, and he had just made Bull Durham it was mm. the previous movie, another baseball movie, and he didn't want to do another baseball movie because mm-hmm. he did them back to back. Bull Durham, yeah, he filmed Field of Dreams before Bull Durham even came out, right? And but he said those six words, "Want to have a catch." is the entire movie and he's like i have to do this Mm -hmm. and they have a catch and it's just like oh my god like i it made me you know me and my dad (laughs) play catch all the time and like it's just like and just having that chance like anyone would if they had that chance and and truly i mean ben and i were talking about this yesterday you weren't present, but <laughs> no, not. we had to get our defenses mm-hmm. against Field of Dream Nators. Getting our story straight. Again, not, not a bad movie. <laughs> but, Good movie. Not my favorite. But we, I mean, truly, all sports movies are about underdogs, oh, yeah. overcoming odds, yeah. and it's all about fulfilling your dreams. Yep. And this is like the ultimate like movie for me that really mm. holds it on takes to those... What- it takes what sports movies do best yeah. and boils it down, like distills it. Mm-hmm. That's why I think, and some people don't want that. They want like more sports and like, you know, but it's just like this movie is just, it's, it's just like pure in that way where yeah. like it's not about like a team. It's not following a season. It's not following like a real person or a made up sports figure. It's about like. What sports mean to people, right. not the actual sports. And James Earl Jones has that one speech right near the end where the daughter is telling him, Daddy, you don't have to like uh, sell because people mm-hmm. are going to come. And James Earl Jones delivers this speech about people showing up, yeah. having to brush away the memories like flies like, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. so good. Yeah, it's yeah. so... <clears throat> good movie. It's a sports movie. It is. It's a sports movie. It's not my favorite. It's a good movie. It's very sentimental. It, and it, some people don't like that. That That's true. And like I said, it's it depends on how you define sports movies because 
I don't think sports movies necessarily are about sports. You know, they're, they're not. Sports are a metaphor or a vehicle for. They're just a vehicle something for else. something else, mm-hmm. for for something for life, basically. Right. Right. So, um, Field of Dreams, how the many? greatest <laughs> in all its greatness and its greatness. So, what's the scale? Let's let's uh, do um, how many baseball mitts it's going to get? Baseball gloves? Yeah, baseball gloves. Oh, five baseball gloves. Five baseball gloves for me. Give it four. Four. Okay, I can live with that. Yeah. Okay. Again, it's a great movie. It's not my favorite. Mm-hmm. I want to change my vote. Okay. Six baseball gloves. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. You're going way above that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, we're allowed to break the rules here. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. We just made them up. So. <laughs> so, I mean, if you can go above five, I would go there, too, because... Because um, there's other ones on this list that I would give five to, yeah. but then Aww. it's like... Then they're on the same par as Field of Dreams, and it's not for me. So, it's, a, okay. it's a special movie. It's really hard. I... I don't quite think there's another movie like it. There, there really isn't. And, you know, the one thing, the last thing I want to say about Field of Dreams is nobody knows who actually voiced the voice in this really? movie. It's no, not it supposed just to says be the God. Voice. It's not. Oh, and it says, and, and, and in the credits, it just says himself. Yeah. So some people have said it was Ray Liotta. Some people mm. said it was um, Kevin Costner. Some yeah. people said it was the director the director has never said who revealed the voice. Huh, interesting. Who it was some people said it was James Earl Jones of the But it's not clear like no, what the voice James actually Earl is Jones. right too is it something mm-hmm. internal is it god is it just the universe mm-hmm. it's ambiguous yeah. so it can be like anything mm-hmm. we know one thing though it's definitely not James Earl Jones because his voice would have been like so Darth totally, Vader? totally like, everybody knows his voice <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no. Everybody but yeah, has nobody the knows who the voice huh. is. That's one of the great mysteries of the movie. It okay. just says the voice and then himself. It'd be hilarious if it was just like a grip. Yeah, it is <laughs> like, like some random person. You know, it's, sort of like a, it's sort of like the voice of Hal on, on the set when they were doing it. They had this guy with a Cockney accent reading Hal's lines in yeah, the movie. Yeah, 2001. Huh. <laughs> nope, never again. All right. <laughs> never again. We nope. might have to revisit that. No. <laughs> I love 2001. Why don't we stick in the same sport and go with the next uh, baseball movie that we have? Okay, A League of Their Own, 1992. Their own. Love this movie. This is our favorite <laughs> so one at our house. There's no crying in baseball. It's, it's I, I this, this is the last one that I rewatched. I rewatched it last night. Oh my gosh, we watched and that. We quote that movie. Yeah. Every I mean, time. Yeah, I mean every here's the time. Thing. I mean, Field of Dreams has those quotable things. Everybody knows, mm-hmm. you know, if you yeah. build it, he will yeah. come or go the distance. Yeah. And the same thing with this movie where you have, there's no crying in baseball. Yeah. I, I want you know, a shirt scene. so bad <laughs> to wear when Madison gets upset playing softball. I'm just going to be like, <laughs> see? <laughs> see? See? We're there's not getting no upset about this. It's, it's it's one of Tom Hanks's greatest performances. It's so good. Oh, yeah. um, Why am I blanking on the little kid's name? Still well, Angel. Still well. Still well. Still well, Angel. He's like, get him out of here. And then he trips and falls. He's like, <laughs> I love it when he nails him with the glove and he's like, ha ha, got him. <laughs> and everybody's laughing behind him except for, she's like, still well, Angel. Well, yeah. Okay, so this movie is about the All American, uh, what was the it's, actual? It's got like, it's a huge actor. It's, it's all like American All American Girls, Girls Baseball, Baseball Girls. Professional League. Yeah. Right. And this had happened during World War II when all the guys yep. and all the yep. players from the Major League Baseball were going off to yep. war. And it was mostly in the Midwest. It was Mo- all Midwest. It was. It was right. four teams. So it was South Bend. Indiana, mm-hmm. Racine, Wisconsin, Kenosha, Kenosha and Rockford, Illinois. Mm-hmm. Right, and everybody thought that there was going to be no baseball during the mm-hmm. entire World War II, and but the baseball, the owners of the teams didn't want to see that happen, so they come up with this idea of making uh, a girls' league for baseball, and so I got it something really, really popular. So when I was at the Smithsonian <laughs> of uh, you got Museum to see it. of um, American History, yeah, or an original Rockford oh, Peaches. Wow. Pennant. Wow. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing that when I was there. Um, wow. And like, yeah. So like that, those teams were all real. Um, mm-hmm. I gotta say, Gina Davis. Yep, Gina so Davis, good. so good, so good. Rosie O'Donnell, Madonna, Rosie Madonna. O'Donnell, Madonna are all good. of them. Just yeah. Uh, and Laura, Laura Petty, right? Is Lori Petty, Lori Petty. Mm-hmm. She's so kid. good, so yep. good in that. She's um, got like perfect younger sibling energy. She yeah. does. Dottie yeah. is just the perfect Dottie Hinson, and. Um, She's the Queen of Diamonds. She's it's, the catcher. It's just um it's a really good 
you know, I don't know if it's a perfect movie, but no, and then, got, and then John got. Lovitz. I mean, my <laughs> God, John Lovitz is good. so good. As the scout at the start where he's yeah. just like, you see, the way it works is the train moves, not the station. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or when the, he drops him off and he goes, well, I'll see you later. And they go, where are you going? And he's like, well, my job is done. Yeah. I'm going to go home, take I a shower. I hate it when they get attached. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, give the wife a little thing. Tickle, tickle. tickle. <laughs> Thank I, God my girls have not picked that one up yet. Oh, but he's so it just goes good. Over their oh, we still. should talk about Marla. Who? Oh, Marla! Oh, I Marla, love Marla. Marla oh. Gucci is the best. She, <laughs> yeah. So basically, the way is so they decide they're going to do this Harvey bars, which is basically he's supposed to be Wrigley. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, and he's going to start this girls' baseball league. But he only wants pretty girls. Because well, he knows course. it's going to sell tickets. Because they're going to put him in skirts. And yeah. Very, oh my gosh! I exactly remember the first the time thing. we watched this movie, and because we were watching it as a family, because I think it was during COVID, we're like family mm-hmm. movie night every Friday night. We watched it. Madison goes, "What the heck? <laughs> what? No!" <laughs> well, even at the time, they're like, "We're not playing we're not that." Playing and they're like, that. "Then you're not playing." Mm-hmm. Um, but oh, Madison had a fit. She's like, "I would have punched somebody," and I'm like, "Yeah, you probably would have." <laughs> so, anyways, like. John Lovitz is a scout. He goes out. So in this dairy in Oregon, um, you have Donnie, Dottie, which is played by Gina Davis, her little sister, Kit, who's a pitcher. She's played by Lori Petty. He wants Dottie because Dottie is like, she's great. She's and like she Johnny is, Bench. She is like the best player in all of the team. Mm-hmm. She's the best player in the league. There's a great scene later on the bus later in the movie where Tom's like, you're the best player in the league, don't you know this? And she's like, I didn't know. And it's mm. like, stop that, yeah. you knew. <laughs> um, but but she's a lot older than the other girls who are playing. She's married. Mm-hmm. Bill Pull- Pullman's her husband. He's in the war. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but, so basically, John Lovitz is like, I want you, I don't want you, Kit, I want Dottie. Mm. And then Dottie's like, you know, Kit's like, take me, I can pitch. And he's like, well, if you get your sister to go, you can both come. Mm-hmm. So then she convinces Dottie, you know. And <laughs> then the next stop is, like, Colorado, and they got to go see Marla Hooch. And Mar- <laughs> they cuts to this gym, and she's just raking. I'm talking. Like ripping those balls through the windows. Huge. Yeah. She's like Miguel Cabrera. Mm-hmm. Like, and they're like, oh, my God. Like, and she's, she's playing against guys. Like, yeah. she's like. Like out the window through the gym. And she was raised by a single father. Yeah. 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 The mom died. Slim boys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so then, like, he's like, oh, Marla, because they're like, oh my God, she's amazing. Come over here, meet John Lovitz, the scout. <laughs> She's like not the prettiest, she, and obviously, she, like, what, they, what did he do? What did he even say? I can't he went like, Ugh. Ugh. yeah. He's like, she walks up and she's like really shy and everything, like, and her hunched hair over. Is and and the father says, "Well, look up. Go ahead." And she looks up, and John Lovitz. She takes her face, hat off. She yeah. takes her head off, and John Lovitz's face is like, "Oh." And she was like, and he's like, "Well, we're we got to get back to the station now." And it's like, "Come on!" <laughs> and but I love it because then Dottie and Kit just stop, and they're like, like and they their drop stuff their down. bags, and they and just stand like, there. Oh. And the dad, it's a really, really good scene where he's like, "Look, I raised her like a boy. I didn't know what else. Her mom died. You know, it's mm-hmm. my fault. Mm-hmm. You know, she's, you know." She, you know, if she was a boy, I'd be talking to the Yankees right now. That's mm-hmm. how good she is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And finally, they're like, "Oh, okay." And that's the scene where, like, she's like, "Daddy, I don't want to leave you." And he's like, "No, you got to go. There's nothing in I this town." Mm-hmm. And then they're at the train. She won't get on the train, and he's like, "You know, yeah. the, you, the, the way this works." <laughs> <laughs> just everything that comes out of his mouth is just a, the best one liner. He's just throwing a hundred miles an hour. How about when he's talking to the guy on the train, and t- they're talking about their jobs and everything? Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Just sitting here listening. If you I had know, your job, if I'd I had your job, myself. I'd kill myself. <laughs> Because, does anybody have a bullet around here? Or something like that? Yeah. It's just so good. Oh, God. Oh, my God. But then they get to the tryouts. They're at Wrigley Field. Mm-hmm. You know, Harvey <laughs> Field. And um, they meet Madonna and Rosie O'Donnell, and they meet some people, and there's a really good, like, montage. Yeah. Like, uh, and then they split up the teams, and there's four teams, and they have, like, lists. Oh, another one of my favorite scenes in the movies. There's oh, one, yeah, she can't read. <laughs> one so one uh, woman who's lingering by, and one of the coaches is like, sorry if not on the list, you're cut. And she's like looking, and he's like, are you on the list? And then someone realizes, goes up, and they're like, can you read? And she's like, no. 
And he's like, what's your name? And his, my name's Shirley. And looks like, you're on our, you're the Rockford Peach. I love mm-hmm. that scene. Mm-hmm. And then they yeah. teach her to read. Oh, God, Madonna. On the <laughs> bus later in the movie, she's <laughs> reading a smut. smut. smutty book. And they're yeah. like, what are you teaching Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is the best part. Keep on going. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> Madonna's really good in this Yes, movie. she yes. is. She is. And, she's May Morabito. And, and she, had, she sings the theme song to the movie. This used so, to be my playground. Really good. So, yeah, I love no. that song. We had this movie on VHS. So I've seen it so many times. We used to mm-hmm. rent it cause yeah. from the library. We, yeah, yeah, we owned it. That's how much we watched it. And like, yeah. remember me and Muggles? Watched, shout out to Muggles, who <laughs> is a, our biggest fan. Our guys. biggest fan, yes. So say hi to Muggles. <laughs> hey, Muggles. Hey. <laughs> have you met my sister? I've never met your what? sister. What? No. Okay, next time next she's time here. We should all go out. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> that would be fun. I would enjoy that. But every time she listens to the podcast... Um, and she's always wants more Manda. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't you know. talk that much. <laughs> Sorry. I'm but like, look, I'm trying. They enjoy hearing you swear and me being going beep, bleeping you. Beep, yeah, that's beep, beep, it beep. It is. It is a great film. No, it's I. My girls love it. I love it. But this but is a baseball movie. was a part of it, but yeah. it's not. It's, the whole uh, no, it's thing. not. But I think what it's really nice is like it's a. For such a dark period of history, it was a positive thing for so many yeah. people once they got the league going because they actually, yeah. like, it went on and, like, people were excited for it yeah. and, like, girls saw it. Now, it's, like, one of those things, like, girl sports have been so underwritten for so yeah. many years. I mean, we could go on and on about, let's Title let... Nine didn't come into existence. No, and, like, I mean, 70s. still yeah. to, to this day, yeah. look, we'll yeah. just take the instance of Caitlin Clark. Yeah. She's going to make under $80,000, but her counterpart in the NBA... 12.1 million, million his dollars. first year. Come yeah. on, like, you cannot... But yeah. so that's what I like. It's like, it was such an underrated team. No one thought it was going to do anything, but it was a huge part of history. Like, Madison wanted to do a project on it this year mm-hmm. because that's how much she loves softball. Because mm-hmm. yeah. my kid's on two teams because mm-hmm. we're that crazy family <laughs> that lets her play travel and Little League. But, like, it's just, it's a whole... It's not wholesome, but it's just like it's a... It's a feel-good sports movie. Because well, then you see at the beginning, because Dottie's older and she's going to this reunion. It's at the... So they open, like, a wing of yeah. Coop- yeah. Cooperstown, yeah. the baseball hall of fame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. And I think they did such a good job. So they have, like, Gina Davis mm-hmm. in old makeup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. she They did a really good job. Really her, yeah, though, that's right? all of... It's them. But some of the people are older... Actresses. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't think that was. Gina that was Davis. her. It was her and Dodd. It. it was her and Kit and Kit is the same actress. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Gina Davis. Okay, because I thought it I was thought another it was actress too. that was and Gina Davis was doing her lines. Oh, I don't know. So this Either is way, 92, and I don't know if I mean I that because I because if it is Gina Davis in old age makeup, that is the best old. I age thought makeup it was. Anyways, but so it starts there, and then they're they're playing baseball at the field and then it ages back you know to the 40s right. but then at the end of the bad. movie they're all having that wing you know what open and Stillwell's there and still well but here's the thing <laughs> someone approached penny marshall when they were doing the final cut of the film the editor and said you need to cut off this ending it's too sentimental no no they did the editor but, like, was that's like the best and here's penny penny marshall and her response was Nah, I like it. We're going to keep it. And that's all she said. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a whole, like, it, the movie starts that way, it ends that way, and it, like, it just, it's a full, you get a full yeah. circle. And there's you this. You get a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the character played by mm-hmm. Tom Hanks, Jimmy Dugan, has, say. has this relationship mm-hmm. with Dottie. Mm-hmm. It doesn't get romantic or anything no. like that. But It's I mutual mean, respect. Really, yeah. Mutual respect. We should say, so... Tom Hanks plays Jimmy Dugan, who's the manager of the team. Mm-hmm. He is a retired baseball player. He's loosely based on Jimmy Fox. Right. Um, and he basically drank himself out of the league. He was, like, one of the best players in the league. And Yeah, he was drunk, what, half the games in the yeah. movie? Oh, yeah. there's so many. I mean, <laughs> there's stuff he says we can't even say. This, this guy, uh, two kids come up to ask him to sign baseball. Yeah, yeah sure. Oh. And he signs it. And he says... Thanks, Jimmy. Avoid wow. the clap. Wow. Avoid the clap. Jimmy, Jimmy Dugan. Dugan. He's like, that's good advice, kid. <laughs> oh, my God. The first time you uh, see him introduced to the team, he's, he walks in. They're like, Jimmy Dugan. And then I think Betty Spaghetti's like, will you sign this for my husband? And that like, was a baseball card. And he's just like, bleh, bleh. and he goes to the toilet and he pees for like two minutes. And they're all just standing there like, like 
What wow. the? Josie O'Donnell's is tying like him. Tying him to see. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> and he's just because he doesn't. At first, he's like, I don't got ball players. I got girls. Yeah. And then, and then you got Dottie, who's basically running the entire team. Yeah, and yeah. then he gets angry because, like, she's doing a good job. He's like, I can do better than that. And and my one of my favorite scenes is where. Gina Davis is giving the signs as to what. No, oh, and he's sitting there doing and he's it too. Doing it and they're going back and forth. <laughs> like, and Marla is just standing there going. <laughs> she goes in. She goes uh, out of the box. <laughs> in the box. Out. <laughs> Poor Marla. Man, we could go on about this movie for hours. We could go on. Another favorite thing when they do like the newsreel type thing, introducing the team, mm-hmm. and they're like, "And that's Marla Hooch," and she's like, "They introduce everyone because everyone's like very attractive, right?" Right. And then they show Marla Hooch, and she is like out in center field, you know, like a hundred feet away, away, just waving. <laughs> oh come on! The, uh, the scene other... where Marla is singing, it had to be you. at the bar. <laughs> what did you do to her? The other we got also they're talk like, about. We, hold on, they're like we gave her a dress, and then Madonna's like in a lot of liquor. <laughs> <laughs> we also need to talk about Madonna's um, church scene. Oh yeah, the church. scene. <laughs> That's the second time he's dropped that Bible. <laughs> Madonna is in a confessional yes. talking to the priest. And then when she leaves, the priest comes out and goes, and looks. just looks to see her. So, Oh, he is, and he's all like sweaty. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> She's like, what the hell? All right, we, we uh, gotta, we gotta rate this such, film. Uh, five. Five. Like it's five. Five and a quarter. It's I, I, I'll go, f- I'll go five. Well, yeah, oh, I, I'm, one well, of actually, are we gonna, because if we go if to we're gonna, six, if we're gonna go to I'm six. still gonna go five. Yeah, it's Because five. I would bump Field of Dreams up to six. So, and so then okay, six five. is your max. Mm, six is well, the five max. is the max, but in special break glass, in case of emergency, you can go to six. Okay. Well, then in five. The, okay. I'm going to break the glass for Field of Dreams and say six. Same. And then I would say this is a five. Uh, I'm going to give it five and a quarter um, mm-hmm. baseball gloves. Mm-hmm. One other thing. So I promised my mom I'd bring this up. Okay. I had seen this movie so many times, right? Mm-hmm. The last scene of the game. And, and so basically what happens is, just to set this up, Dottie and Kit, they, they can't coexist. Dottie yeah, wants to leave the league. Games, yep. They're like... Will trade me. They end up mm-hmm. trading Kit to the Racine Bells, Which even is though not Dottie, what Dottie wanted. No, no she wanted Dottie to be traded, wanted but they're like, we would it. never trade you. Yeah. And it turns out they meet in the World Series. Kit's team and Dottie's team. Bottom of the ninth. Um, Kit basically is just going to score the game-winning run. Dottie's at home. She's a catcher. She gets the ball. Collision. Mm-hmm. Dottie goes to the ground. Slow motion. Ball comes out of her hand. Kit's safe. Okay? So there's a scene earlier in the movie where they do this and Dottie gets crashed into and holds onto the ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they, that was a good setup for this. She, It's like the hand goes out. It, The ball just tumbles out of the hand, right? Mm-hmm. So my entire life, I was like, man, Kit smoked her. Like, No, she, she did it. She did for it on Kit. purpose. Okay. <laughs> so three years ago, I'm listening to a movie podcast, mm-hmm. and everyone is like, "Yeah." And then Dottie lets go of the ball, and I was like, "I, I was like, what? What? <laughs> she let go of the ball." I went and found my mom, and I was like, "Ma, yeah." And she was like, "You didn't know that," and I was like, "What the hell?" <laughs> I was like, "No, because a good catcher is going to have that thing." No. Well, but you also can. I mean, and a collision because in my head canon. Mm-hmm. So I have went and looked this up. It was supposed to be intentionally ambiguous. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Apparently, everyone on planet Earth but me <laughs> clearly thought she let go of the ball. Yeah. Um, but my entire life, up until mm-hmm. like. Three years ago, mm-hmm. seen this movie like a hundred times. I just was like, Kit smoked her and Dottie, you know, because sometimes that happens in baseball. Sometimes they don't hold on to it, yeah. you know? Yeah. No, that and was intentional, Ben. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> so, in my mind, I was like, God, Dottie's such a gamer. She wouldn't do that. But then I can see. She came back for the last game. I know. Yeah. So I see, but like, mm-hmm. so that was a funny thing. So everyone on planet Earth <laughs> thought that Daddy Penny Marshall wouldn't say. So it was not like it was scripted, mm. where like it was that clear. I'm just trying mm. to like give, you know. 
But so every, you guys never at one point thought she. No, no. I thought I thought that Gina Davis gave it up for his. Sister I think sister. part of me too didn't want to believe that older sister here. Like she's want this is what her sister wants so bad. That's true. Mm-hmm. I guess part of me thought, you know, when I was a kid, I was like, it would have been better. Like, if Kit actually did it and Dottie didn't give it to her, if she let go of it intentionally. So that's part of why, like, I never considered. Mm-hmm. I just thought mm-hmm. Kit finally, this was her moment where she beat her sister. Not that her sister let her score. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, here's the thing. I mean, because Dottie, Gina Davis, doesn't want to go mm-hmm. on. No. I mean, she doesn't want to be a part of the league she, anymore. He, she her wants husband to go home and have home. children and everything like that. <laughs> and so... She knows that she's going to give up. She's not going to come back. She knows yeah. that her sister it's wants to make, yeah, that, make so a life So for her to go on, she needs to win the World Series. And if Series. she had held on to that ball, then they never would have let her quit. They would have like kept on hounding her and yeah. wanting to come back and everything. Well, by this point, her husband comes back from the war. Oh, we... Bill Pullman. Mm-hmm. We got to mention the Betty Spaghetti telegrams. Oh, oh God. The saddest good. part of the movie. <laughs> Um, because Gina Davis goes through the whole first part of the movie thinking that her husband is going to die in the war. Well, think of that was so many wives. Yeah. Like yeah, here, so many people. So there's a scene where telegram from the war department comes when they're in, you know, getting ready yeah. for a game, and he's like, "Well, there's a mix-up. I don't have the right." And Tom Hanks just is like, "Give me that thing." He's like, like "Give no, it to me." No. Well, this isn't authorized. Tom Hanks just basically like throws him out. He looks at the telegram. Mm-hmm. He goes. The camera pushes in. So we know Betty Spaghetti and Dottie both have husbands in the war mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone else is married. I think no. it's just them. Yeah. And it pushes in and They're they sitting both, right next to each other. They yeah. both think mm-hmm. and then he's just like, I'm sorry, Betty. And she just... They all lose it. When I was a kid, that used to get me. I was like, because... But That's anyway. how they found out. It was yeah. shout out to Betty Spaghetti. She, when I was a kid, she was my favorite player, not Dottie, mm-hmm. not including Dottie on the team. Yeah, because they're like she likes making spaghetti. They call her Betty, Betty spaghetti. spaghetti. It's such a powerful scene, and Hank's plays it so well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's one of his very best roles. Yeah, it mm-hmm. really is. So we got it rated. You said yep. five. Mm-hmm. I said five. You said six. I said six five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. Okay. All right. Next one. All right. What do we want to do next? Let's do Rocky. Rocky. So, 1976, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, one best, best, best picture. Best picture, yeah. Best picture, nominated for best actor, it was, one's best, wins best it director. Won, too, yeah, three award, it won three awards. We looked this up, because mm-hmm. like, I started it at 9.20 at night, and we love Rocky at our house. Mm-hmm. We love Rocky so much that when we adopted our first boxer, we found out the boxer's dad's name mm-hmm. was Clash's Clay. Oh, nice. Clash's Clay, <laughs> So that was that was mm-hmm. our boxer's dad's name, and so we named our boxer Rocky Balboa, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he was he was a good boy at the end. Ben can attest. When I met him, he, he was old. He was old, tired. He just wanted to lay down. He didn't want no problems. I remember Rocky. This yeah. this dog though, when we got him as a puppy, Complete he psychopath, right? Psycho, like mm-hmm. rolled his crate peed in his i mean anything the dog could do wrong like i'm like oh my god i made the biggest mistake getting a puppy what did i do what did i do and you didn't learn did you Amanda? no hey miss Miss t T. is another which would have been adrian Mm because it's a female and david's like we're gonna have rocky and we're gonna have an adrian and i'm like i don't think rocky has that much longer with us and i'm not gonna have an adrian without a rocky right so we i wanted Rhonda for Rhonda rousey Mm mm-hmm but she was black, and David's like, I want to call her T. So, like Mr. T. Like from, Mr. T. Like from, from, Lang, from the, Lang. Yep, from Rapper the third T. one. So we have Miss T, and her. we just call her T. And she is a, she is, she will take your kneecaps out. So we love boxing, mm-hmm. boxers, and this is David's favorite movie. He started this movie at 9.20 at night. It's a two-hour movie. David goes to bed by 9.30. Mm-hmm. Look he at stayed him. up through the He stayed thing. through the whole thing. Yeah. It's and Rocky. he just, he's like, you started it, and I got to be invested. He's <laughs> go, although, the fourth one's my favorite. So With interesting. Ivan Drago? He no. loves the fourth one. Mm. That's because, well, me and Roddy were talking about this yesterday. So, Rocky it's the best the redemption best. story, and it's got the most in it. And what? it's the end of communism. <laughs> so, here's the thing. So, we talked about this yesterday, but we'll talk about it here with all of us. Um, 
The first Rocky is like technically the best movie, right? Yeah. Number two, it lays all the groundwork. You get to know who he is and really, how he was. It's, it's, it's a real like film. The thing and, about um, the second one is it's not as good because it just tries to remake one. Yeah, but Rocky wins in the second. Yes, movie. They, and right. he beats um, what's his name? Uh, well, he beats Apollo. He beats, he beats Apollo. Apollo. It's a rematch. Yeah, and one. it's um, oh, he just passed away. Yeah, Carl yeah, Weathers. Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers. Oh, shout out. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, so good. Actually, when I was rewatching this again, Carl Weathers doesn't mm. get the credit he do for acting in this movie. Like, all the other actors were all nominated, mm -hmm. not Carl Weathers. But what I was saying was, the second one's kind of so-so. Three and four, people really like because they're super fun 80s movies. But they're like superhero movies. They're mm -hmm. like, yeah. like, Rocky's like a superhero. They just, they're very... Like he's so well known now, they and he become caricatures of. Themselves. They are, but they're but they're really well done, and they're so yeah. fun. So I love three, and I love four. Mm -hmm. I think you gotta say one's the best, but yeah. I understand if people say three or four are their favorites. Although I will say that when Mickey dies in the third one, that's tough. That man. just about yeah. killed. That's I, the again, Eye of the Tiger one. Yeah, it yeah. is Eye of the Tiger. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And four is great because Drago kills Apollo, and he's if he dies, he dies. Yeah. Um, and then he comes back to, you know, win. He beats him in beats Moscow him. on Christmas Day. Communists ended right then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, pack it up, take the wall down. But the first one really is no, the it's, best. It's, the it's, but it, it builds series. the foundation. You meet yeah. you may meet all the characters. You, like, see where he comes from, yeah. how he trained. If like, you sort of want to talk about sort of a perfect <clears throat> film in a way, I think Rocky <clears throat> has all those elements <clears throat> for yeah. a sports movie. Underdog. I mean, you want to talk about underdog. Rocky Balboa in that first one. It's like it's synonymous. Like, you yeah. think of underdog, you yeah. think of Rocky. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. how... I think only two sports movies have ever won Best Picture. Yeah. It's this and Chariots of Fire. Mm -hmm. So it's doing something. Um... And so, by the way, we thought about Chariots of Fire, too. So... I... You want to talk about boring. I we love it. that movie. We love... Amanda, you would hate Chariots of Fire. <laughs> which almost... We haven't got to Hoosiers yet. Oh, you think Hoosiers is boring? Oh wait, let's not let's not. We're in, we're in boxing right now. Yeah. But no, so I I mean Rocky's like a big deal, and we love yeah, it. Yeah, you guys and love I, Rocky. You get that. You get to know who he is and how he's like down and out, and then you have Polly and Adrian. Polly's a piece of crap. He is terrible. <laughs> he is. He's an he's awful racist. person. He's a misogynist. He's just so mean he's to his abuser. sister. Oh my god! That scene where he <laughs> takes the turkey and throws it out the window. Yeah, it's yeah. like what the. He's awful. Like, He's a terrible person. You watch all the Rockies and you're like, well, why isn't like Rocky just killed him at this point? <laughs> He's just, he loves Adrian and that's Adrian's that's brother. Adrian's brother. And I mean, actually, Polly <laughs> isn't quite so terrible in the other movies <laughs> as he is in this one. I got a question for you, like, yeah. for the group, but specifically Amanda. Like, what do you think of Adrian, like, Talia Shire's character in this? Because... Sometimes you read criticisms because it's almost like a she's all she's all that type city. I mean, because Talia Shire is like she's very quiet. She's very mousy. She's like I think she she's got the glasses. They made her all frumpy, but like in like she's, she's not beautiful. No, she's, she's gorgeous. Not. Like yeah. in gorgeous. Rocky Three, she's like model, and she's and she's coming off of like Godfather Godfathers. One and Godfather well, and, Two. But you see through like the movie though. You she starts off like super frumpy, but then you get to the end of the movie and she's stylishly dressed in the seventies yeah. clothes. And that's why, because I know like, you don't like that trope. And I, I don't. Think it's dumb. But I mean, like at the same time though, I think Rocky gave her the confidence yeah. to be a better person. But I mean, they even do a scene where it's like, let's take the glasses off. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I know. I'm yeah. like, oh god. But you know, because Rocky at this point, and this is the thing me and Marty were also talking about, where like Rocky just gets smarter somehow mm -hmm. the more fights he has. Yeah, it's like reverse CTE. Yeah. Oh, I don't. Where know like <laughs> because. He's dumb in this. And then in number two, a big part of the plot is, like, he can't read. He's mm -hmm. got so much head damage, he can't read. And then, like, three and four, he's, like, sophisticated. And he's it's, got, like... They get married in, what, the second one? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, and then they have... Is there a kid? I can't remember if there's kids. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah, kids. Well, she's pregnant, I think, or something. Yeah, the yeah. kid The kid is... Is born in that one, isn't he? Is born in I three, right? I it's been so long. Like, I he's in three because he's a little... Because he's got the little robot... Mm. But I thought he's an she, adult in the. Why section. does why does uh, Talia Shire end up in in a coma though in the in Rocky two? But I thought it was after she gave birth or I, it's I, I something can't, I can't remember. I, it's remember. been so long since we right. watched them. But I mean, but, I mean, but here's the thing that that one scene where where Mickey comes and is begging, really wants to beg Rocky to let him manage him because this has been his dream. Yeah, what you need is a manager. Yeah, and that. 
Burgess Meredith is so good. So good. You make him feel, I mean, he makes you feel so bad mm-hmm. <laughs> for him. And then Rocky, of course, he, Burgess Meredith has not been treating Rocky well. No. At all. No, terrible. Took his locker, put him on skid row. <laughs> and, he had that locker for eight years. Right. Six and, years. And then, and then Burgess years. Meredith like puts on his hand, is walking out, and he can hear Rocky just like unloading. Yeah. And then you get this like distancing far shot yeah. Yeah. where mm-hmm. you see Mickey walking down the street and Rocky comes running out. Like at and, night, the street night, lights. And runs up to him. You don't hear what they say mm-hmm. to each other. But then they shake hands. But then they shake hands. Mm-hmm. And, you're like, and Rocky puts his arm around Mickey's shoulder yeah. and they go walking. Yeah. And I was like, that is true. Is so brilliant. It is Rocky need, he didn't need a manager. He yeah. did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he absolutely did. Could not have Polly. And you would never, I mean, and. Truly, you have that scene, which I don't think before in a sports movie I can recall, where suddenly Rocky is training, seriously training. You get that mm-hmm. music starting. Most dun, One of the most dun, 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 iconic dun, 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 moves is going to fly now, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just amazing where he's running and he goes up the steps. And Dude, if we the ever, steps. if we ever go there. Oh, if I ever go to Philly, it's yeah. the first thing My yeah, that's, sister-in-law did, did she? That. she? Apparently, she it's like super crowded to do steps. it. Let me tell you. They looked like they were ready to die by the time well, I'm they sure. got to the top of those steps. Because the statue is there. Right. Because yeah. mm-hmm. they made a f- actual Rocky statue for the third one. Mm-hmm. And then they had the statue, and they're like... What do we do? What do we do with it? <laughs> so it's been moved... A few, it was in, They put it in front of the Spectrum in Philadelphia mm-hmm. for a long time. Mm-hmm. They tore the Spectrum down. Now it's at the base of those steps. Right. That's cool. Um, But now it's just like a... Part of Philly now, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. So no, David, like, if we ever go to Philly, I'm like, we can go to Philly. Let's go to Philly. And actually, she did this video. She had the Rocky music behind, and they're running up in slow motion <laughs> yeah. up the steps. Imagine if you just work there. You're probably like so sick of just <laughs> yeah, these tourists like, like mm, booking it up the okay, steps. No. <laughs> but no shame, I'd do it. Yeah, no. but. You know, a lot of people don't even remember this about the original Rocky. Is that Rocky doesn't win? It's a no. split decision, yep. and it goes to, to it Apollo. goes to Apollo Creed. Mm-hmm. But know, and he, and Apollo Creed when they're hugging at the end afterwards, he was like, "Ain't gonna be, be a no, rematch." I don't want a rematch, and, and he's he, like, "Yo, Adrian!" Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Adrian sinks into the ring, and music plays. But if you know, he never was like trying to win. He's just like, "I just want to go the distance with the champ." Right? Yeah, yeah, I just want to go the distance. Mm-hmm. Um, prove that he could do it. Just mm-hmm. to prove he could do it. Oh, I love it. At the very start of the fight, he knocks Apollo down. Oh, yeah. And that yeah. was like the first a round. It was point. the first knockdown of his career. Right. Yeah. And yeah. everyone's like, oh, sh- serious <laughs> now. Yeah. Duke. Yeah. So Duke is Apollo's trainer, and he's mm-hmm. in a bunch of the movies. And I just love where he's like, I'm going to stop the fight. And he's like, you ain't stopping nothing. Yeah. Well, it's like when he was watching the TV of like when Rocky was training and stuff. But the yes, news report, I love he's, that. Like, he's like, dude, you need to watch this. Like, Apollo comes here. And he's like, no, no, no. Let's I'll drop him. him in three. Yeah. He's like, I'll, I'll, let's keep planning. I'm more worried. Because he really training that no. hard for it. And he, he, no. he was more worried about coming out in his George Washington outfit. Yeah, and pretty his... awesome, actually. <laughs> no, yeah, great. That, I mean, that it was hilarious. Don't get me wrong. But like that's he was more focused on like the promotion part of it and, and Duke not is even like, a- this guy is going to be trouble. Yeah. Yeah, right. but Duke was watching him cuz he was watching the TV segment mm-hmm. where Rocky is punching the, the sides meat. of meat. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, "Champ, you got to look at this." And he's, he's just like, oh, "Man, look at nothing." Um <laughs> and that's part of the second movie where mm-hmm. people are like, "I th- you know, cuz it's a split decision and when that happens in real life, people are like, "Now the other guy won." And people mm-hmm. are like, "Rocky beat you." And he's like, Finally, like, a rematch, and then Rocky beats him, and, Mm -hmm. you know. Such a good movie. All right, let's do it. Um, I'll give it four and a half. Four and a half? Five. Um, I will go four on Rocky. I love, I like Rocky. Uh, Most of these movies that we picked, Mm -hmm. I'm going to give between four and five. They're all Because I think they're all Mm -hmm. great. Yeah. You know, but Rocky, Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, there's so much about Rocky that's good. It's good. So, let's do Miracle. Miracle. Kurt Russell. Again. 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 <laughs> my kids, Again. we were watching, I had the girls watch this one with me. Like, mm-hmm. how many times have you seen this? I'm like, well, considering I worked at the movie theater when it came out, I probably watched it 30 times. Yeah. Like, because, yeah. like, I wasn't paying attention but to, like, that everything. Is, that is the best scene where he's going again. Yeah, Again. and they're in. Well, we talked about it. It's the second best scene. Yeah, well, it is the second best scene where he's making them, they just, uh, I think they tied the Norwegian. No, they team. lost. Did they lose? No, they tied because oh, he says, tied. you're going to come oh. here and tie the Norwegian oh, B team. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and so he makes them. It's a team that should have mopped the floor. Right. And, and he, they did He keeps on making them uh, skate back and forth across the ice, and he does it, like, forever. Hours. Should we, it seems like, like hours, 
Oh, Can actually, I... set the movie up though. Oh yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Hasn't seen it. So it's about the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team, Lake Placid, the Miracle on Ice. Mm-hmm. You you know what the Miracle on Ice was. Yep. Some of you listening to this were alive. I was alive. Some of us were not. No. Nope. Mm-hmm. But still, it's probably it's one of the greatest upsets in sports history. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. um and uh, it basically follows Kurt Russell's character, Herb Brooks. He was the coach. He was at the time he was the coach at the University of Minnesota. They and at this him. time, they only have college kids essentially playing. They only have college kids. Right. The Soviets are basically unbeatable. Right. Yep. Their and hockey, they haven't been lost since like 1964. Since 64 when he was because on the Kurt team. Kurt Russell was supposed to well, go got cut, from the, got cut from the team one got week. Got cut for the, from the team in 1960. The hockey team mm-hmm. wins gold. And then the Soviets come along. Yeah. And the Soviets, and they, they had the best team mm-hmm. in the world. I mean, they were for all intents and purposes like professional players. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they... And just so many legendary players, and that's the Soviet style of hockey literally did change the game of hockey. It did. You can watch the whole, was it the Russian Five on yep, was it Netflix? So good. Mm-hmm. so good. There's a few good documentaries. There's one called Red Army, mm-hmm. and it's about, it follow, It talks to Fatisov. It talks about like, and there's an ESPN 30 for 30 um, documentary about the what happened to the Russian team after they lost. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really good, but it. The main character in both is Slava Fatisov, who was very young on this player on this team, but he went on to be part of the Russian Five and the Red Wings. Mm-hmm. So everyone knows Fatisov; he's a legendary player. Um, but this team was just so good. Like Boris Mikhailov was like one of the gr- greatest center at the time. Trediak was the best goalie. They had they were the best, the best. Um, and everyone was just playing for second place. And um, mm-hmm. when they're forming this team. They're like, you know, we're not going to win a medal, but we just don't want to be embarrassed. Right. Yeah. And Herb Brooks is like, no, we need to change everything we do. Mm -hmm. Like, we need... So he came up with a hybrid system that could compete. And this is all true. He all really did this. This Mm -hmm. is what actually happened. Um, So he puts together just the right right team and you know he's got like his idea of like the best player not he's not looking for the best players he's looking for the right players he's looking for the right players that mesh well Mm -hmm. which is smart because like you don't want to just put the best players because then everybody's in their own head yeah so basically it just follows them and their training and i love i love this movie so much it's just so good um and at the beginning, he's making them do all these things, and he keeps on asking each player, who do you play for? Right. And, and, it, and they, it wasn't until after they did that again drill. Yeah. Right. For Whether hours. In Norway after, yep. after time And Norway. the guy's like, my name is so-and-so. Right. I, I play, play for America. I play for the USA. Right. But first, first what happens is there's kind of a rivalry, because there's a natural rivalry between players from Boston and players from Minnesota. Right. Right. And then in a national championship game, like two years prior, Boston University like lost to Minnesota. And the players are still salty about it, so they get in a fight. And then Coach mm-hmm. Herb Brooks is like, well, let's introduce each other. And it's like, hi, I'm Mark Johnson. I Who do you play for? Boston University. Hi, I'm this. I play for University of whatever, right? So they're mm-hmm. all saying their names and their colleges mm-hmm. they play for. And then they're messing around during that Norway game. They're, like, looking at the stands. or like Checking out the women. She's hot. Like <clears throat> He's yeah, mad. And, and he is Herb Brooks mad. is, like, listening to it, and he's getting <laughs> – angrier and mm-hmm. angrier. So after the game, they're like, we're going to go out. And he's like, no. He's like, give me the keys to the ring. The <laughs> lights go off. He just makes them run blue line drill they, till they drop, basically. Mm-hmm. They're like they're puking. They're throwing up they on are. Well, you know. <laughs> and Micah Ruzzioni, who would go on to be the captain and the hero, yep. says, Micah Ruzzioni, who do you play for? <laughs> and then United he's like, States done. of America. And he's just like, that's it. That's all, gentlemen. And mm-hmm. boom. So, you know, I love the way all – and the thing about this is, like, Kurt Russell was, like, the only <laughs> famous per- – like, all these yeah, kids all were the not other famous. No. There's, not, there's um, not a huge – I mean, his wife was better. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. She's oh, – Patricia Clarkson I love. Yeah. She's great in everything. Mm-hmm. And then Noah, Noah Emmerich played Coach Patrick. He's right. in a mm-hmm. lot of stuff. But as far as the players – Like, everybody was really unknown. The I actor played Jim Craig – I'd seen before. I'm pretty sure he had been like a killer on Law and Order or something, right? <laughs> um, he did. He was like he did some on SVU one episode. Mm-hmm. I promise you. But everyone else and one of the former players played his or had like their son played. Like he played his dad in the. Well, that's right. cool. I think it was Johnson. Um, but yeah, they go to the Olympics, Lake Placid, New York, 1980. 
Um, so nobody laid back. Nobody thought they were going to win. Nobody thought they were going to nope. win. No. And Madison's biggest thing is like, so we're watching the movie and we get, and you just, you watch the Russian game. It's not even for a medal. No. And you're, we're watching it and she's like, oh my God, how much longer is this movie? And I'm like, after this, it's going to go like that. And she's like, what? I go, this is the game. Yeah. But she's like, it's not for a medal. And I'm like, no, well, because you're going to get It was in clips. the medal round. It was, right, but she right. was thinking they played them. Because I'm like, this is the team that won the gold medal. Because blah, 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 the blah. Russians, I think, won bronze. They did. They year. did. They took... Yeah. So they, basically, they the winners... Finland. Yeah, the winners of the final... It was like a semifinal. There's right. four teams in the medal round. United States won their game. Finland won their game. U.S. beat Finland. And then, like, the Soviets beat Czech Republic or right. Czechoslovakia. But Madison's other thing was, what's wrong with his eyebrows? The Russian coach. Oh, they God, were like, he's got evil eyebrows. He's got, like, they, I mean, they were, like, whooped. Yeah. You, and she's you, just, you, like. You got this whole Cold War thing. They like passed that guy yeah. for his evil eyebrows. Eyebrows. communist eyebrows. And, and, oh, my and, gosh. And plus the Soviet team. None of the players smile. They all no. have this, like, I'm going to get sent to the gulag expression on their faces all the if time. If you watch that documentary mm. with Fatisov, like, it was scary you for feel, them, though. It was scary for them, like yeah. having to go back. Like it just so you know, you know they're like prisoners too, basically. Mm-hmm. So you know you got to understand that. But like, yeah, at know. one point they're like, yeah, if you smile, they'll shoot you. Or whatever. yeah, um, I remember that. It's it's, it's such so a good and the best scene <clears throat> for Kurt Russell, aside from that, again, again, is when he delivers the his speech. speech. Mm-hmm. His speech, yeah. It's just um, yep. great moments are born of great yeah. come from great opportunity. Just, That's what you have here and, tonight, boys. And Ben and I have talked about it. I think mm. it's Kurt Russell's best performance. I do too. Ever. Um, he's such an underrated actor, but yeah. I do think he's got the Herb Brooks like Minnesota accent down. Well, and plus, he doesn't really look like the regular Kurt Russell that you see. He's got that. Mm-hmm. He's got. He's got the hair. Late and, yeah. 70s hair and the pants. He sort of disappeared into the part, which is very, very good. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just. It was amazing. a great performance. Overall, I really enjoyed this movie. It's 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 a great film. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen it in many, many years yeah. and I've forgotten I remember, how great it was. I just remember the, the credit scene. The credits with, with like. The dream on. The dream on. Because mm-hmm. like cleaning the movie theater that's all you'd hear but then you'd watch and see like where everybody where ended everybody up was, yeah. and like it was such a cool way to do it. and there was like the actual pictures of the players mm-hmm, and yeah. i don't and, know and and her brooks did not make it to see this movie he died, he did, he he died, died shortly died, before like, before it was released like right. after they filmed it yeah right i got something else to show you from the smithsonian what is this Aww. So it's Phil Verkota's gloves from the Miracle on Ice game. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, I went to D.C. and um, went to the Smithsonian. I, they're so fun, aren't they? It was great, and um, I flew on an airplane for the first time. <laughs> With David? See, that's the thing. This is, yeah, because... <laughs> that's where I talked to him about Field Amanda's of Dreams. Amanda's husband, David, hates Field of Dreams. He doesn't hate it. He just doesn't think it's the best baseball movie out there, and he oh. thinks we should have watched The Sandlot. We're going to do Sandlot, but... Sandlot's not the best baseball. Movie. No, Sandlot is definitely not. Sandlot's not put, better than a League of Their Own. I, I would no, put, I would no, put Sandlot Durham above. No, see, and he Sandlot. wanted he wanted us to watch for love of the game, but That's he is, all right. he's, here's the thing he's about he's a hardcore Tigers man though. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a Tigers fan too. The thing about I love for for the love of the game, another Costner one. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about for the love of the game is if you are not a baseball fan, this movie will bore the crap out of you because it takes place on like a whole in, an entire game. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to spoil it for you, but like he's the pitcher, and John C. Riley is the catcher, um, and it's the Tigers. He plays for the actual Tigers. So if you're a Tigers fan, you're probably like Costner is a Tiger. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just um... all right. So how many? But we could go on and on. How many? Baseball gloves, are we going to give They them? won the gold medal. They, they did. They did the gold I'm going to give them four and a half. I'll four go and four and a half. Um, <laughs> I'll go four and three quarters. Oh, wow, okay. Mm-hmm. Slightly uh, below Rocky. This is like all these movies are really mm-hmm. high up there. We didn't pick a bad one. No. Okay, so what's the next I movie? I want to do watch? Hoosiers. Hoosiers. So, Amanda, you just go. I don't what? like it. What do you mean? What are you talking about? This is the Hoosiers we're talking about. <laughs> failed, failed basketball coach goes to middle of Indiana to yep. take over the school's team, yep. hires the town drunk, takes them <laughs> all the ways, and they win. Like, it's just, oh. I, I feel remember. Like that's a gross over some. I remember yeah. my mom had this. VHS and it had the it was blue and it said Hoosiers and it had the Converse on the front of it and I mean I tried I just I could not get into it Madison walked out at one point in time because she also plays basketball and she's like 
why are they wearing Converse? There's no support. And I'm like, oh Does she know this movie takes place in the 50s? The I, no, 50s. she had no idea. I'm like, honey, this is taking place in the 50s. That's what they wore back then. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, here, here's us as parents nowadays. Like, oh, do we have the high enough cleats? Do we have the good yeah. enough sneakers? Like... I just, no. I didn't like it. It was slow. Jimmy's it was, basically playing with a peach basket. I mean, like, it's is, just not, it was not it's my favorite. It's slow, though. I don't, I didn't I mean, like it. I think it's exactly the right speed. I just didn't like it. I'm sorry. And it's a redemption story. It is. I mean, it is. And he also treated the players like, I'm not going to. He treated the players like crap. He's hard on them. He's but hard he's on co- them, but I'm just like, him. He cares I don't know. Wait a minute. So you don't think that Kurt Russell is hard on his No, players, he was. He was totally Gene hard. But Gene Hackman being the same thing. No, he was, no, it was just, I just, I don't know. I did so not like it. Coaches gotta be hard on their players to get the I best don't know. out of I them. I just did not like it. I tried. I tried, Marty. I think it's one of Gene Hackman's, one of my favorite performances. No. 100%. 100%. Like, that's um, right. You can Dennis, think that. Dennis Hopper is amazing. His greatest role. Jeb Woolley as the I just, assistant. Oh, so I couldn't good. get Barbara into Hershey. it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't. It's just, I think, like, you have to be a real basketball fan. I'm not a basketball person. Like, I'm sitting there, and what was it, Madison's first tournament this year? Because I, I don't do basketball. Like, I don't get it. I mm. never played it. I can't. It's not me. And that's why this movie's and probably. And exactly I'm just why. like, Madison was, like, trying to get the ball, and I'm like, tag her out! Because that's what you say in softball. Tag, tag the girl out. out. Tag, tag her, her out. Because you want to get her at the base. Tag her out. And David's like, no, you don't say that. And I'm like, what do you say then? I like, Jesus. This I'm is not painful. a sports mom. <laughs> I'm not a sports mom. Okay. Like, I'm trying. Okay. So this explains a lot about your hatred of Hoosiers. <laughs> I don't hate it. I just don't like it. It, it's more like you just like the sport. I don't really like basketball, but my dick kid does. You don't. You don't like the sport. So if this is any other sport, I don't know from Indiana. No. <laughs> so, it, so it like been a rugby. So basketball. Oh God, no, I can't been. do rugby. Either. Basketball that is like no very sense. big in Indiana. Yeah, it's, like, it's huge. huge. No, it's huge. it's huge in the South. We lived in Kentucky for four years. Yeah. It's huge in Kentucky. March Madness was something where I was just like, I was ready to knock people's heads off because that was... You wanted to kill somebody. (laughs) They lived and breathed that sport, and if you didn't... (sighs) Yeah, yeah. Well, so let's talk about favorite scenes. There's a couple. I think the most iconic scene in the movie... So basically is they're Hickory, this very small town. This is based on a true story called Mm -hmm. Milan. Mm -hmm. It was the town, the Milan Miracle. But Hickory, they only got like six guys, but they've got a prodigy. They've got like Jimmy Chitwood is a baller. Right. He is a baller. And everybody thinks they're never going to win unless Jimmy's on the team. Mm-hmm. They're right about that. Yeah, they are. Because th- the big strategy is get the ball to Jimmy. Yeah. Um, but they basically go to the state tournament and they got to play like, I think it's South Bend. South, <laughs> South Bend, something like it's that. It's like a big city. It's a like team. a big city who's got all the best players because they can do yeah, all that. Sort of like, you know, Detroit. <laughs> Yeah, it would be like if, like... We haven't even talked about Hoop Dreams yet. So I know. We're, 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 we're quick, this, is a, this, this is a long podcast, yeah. people. I'm sorry. So anyways, they go to the state finals. They've never... Did you, you know, eat the scary cheese? No, that was mine. Oh, okay. Jesus. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> Please, go on. Um, I'm still breathing, aren't I? That's I got to thing. get it away from Ben because I, I was feeling that. for him that he didn't want to see Okay, okay, let's go back either. to So the anyways, <laughs> they go to, you know, like none of these kids have like probably ever left Hickory. That's right. So they go to the big city, which is Indianapolis, because this is shot in Hinkle Fieldhouse, Butler, historic mm-hmm. venue. And they walk out into the court and they're just like, it's so big, right? Because they're playing in like their gym. The it's a tiny amazing. gym. Yeah, it's like, yeah. This is like the biggest thing they've ever seen. And... You know, Gene Hackman whips out the tape measure and he's like, you, all these, like, they're little, he's like little the guy. shortest little player guys, on the team. Yeah. He's almost like the mascot. Mm-hmm. Like, Ollie, get up on his shoulders, take this tape measure, the measure from the hoop to the Rim ground. Like, it, yeah. What it's is still it? 13 feet. 10 feet. Or 10, 10 feet. feet. Yeah. And they're like, 10 feet. Oh, okay. And they're like, okay, measure from here to the free throw line. And they're like, okay. And then they're like, we get it. See? And they're like, it doesn't matter. The court's the same. Mm-hmm. Like, this Those game are the is the same, same measurements yeah. as the, the and court they get that's, that's one of my favorite scenes, my other favorite scene, because Norm Dale is a controversial co- coach because he was a co- collegiate coach yep. Failed. Um, and got and got banned for life because he struck one of his players yeah. during the playoffs or something like that. Mm-hmm. So he spends 10 years in the Navy 
And then he gets a call from his friend, Shep Woolley, who's the principal of this school, saying, They hey, need a we history need, teacher. We need a history teacher and we need a basketball mm-hmm. coach. And so basically basically he's coming at, to redeem himself. And yeah. and, and so yeah. he shows up. And of course he's doing it the way he knows how to do it mm-hmm. and knows how to win. And everybody else in the town, this sounds so much like Ishpeming and Nagani. You're and that, right. But everybody else knows how to coach basketball. Better than him. They're trying yeah. to That's tell any him. small town. Right. And so, so eventually, they they lose enough games and stuff, mm-hmm. and they're they're ticked mm-hmm. off about how Hackman is doing things. And so they have a town meeting where they're going to vote to see if they're going to fire him or keep him on. So, and um, Jimmy Chitwood has not been playing with. Them. He's like a prodigy of basketball, but doesn't want to like play he just lost on his the team or yeah. something like that. It's just. Uh, and and so they t- they start the vote. There's that one guy that is plays the slimiest. Yeah, he's all awful. The time. He's terrible. But anyway, they take this vote, and then Jimmy comes walking in, and goes up, and he's like, "I got something to say." And the guy goes, "Okay, well, you better say what you have to say, Jimmy." And he says, and then he says, "I think it's about time that I start playing ball." And everybody cheers and goes crazy. And what the guy on the stage goes, "I told you as soon as we got rid of him." And he says one thing: "I play coach stays." If coach goes, I go. Mm-hmm. And then he just walks out. Bam, what a G. I mean, come <laughs> on now. It's the, That's my favorite scene of the whole movie. And then they're like, well, we're going to keep him. <laughs> Jimmy. Like, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Coach is gone by 65 to 45. And then someone says, I want a revote. Jimmy is basically uh, the mayor of the town. He basically just, he is. Uh, I, see, and I just, I don't like it. I don't my like other, it. My other favorite scene is... <laughs> In the locker room, right before they're playing the mm. game, the priest comes in. He just reads shortly from the Bible where David, you know, David took the stone, put it into the sling. Yeah. He slayed the, be- you know, Goliath. Because yeah. this is David and Goliath, right? Yeah. And then they go on and they win. Yeah. Jimmy's a baller. And, that's, and that speech that, jo- that Gene Hackman gives to them. Yeah. And at the end he says, I love you guys. Yeah. Uh, Gone. So, such a good movie. But Amanda... Doesn't like the sport. So. Five baseball gloves. <laughs> Three <laughs> baseball gloves. I'm going to go five on this one. It's so good. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So just, what movie? It's not that I don't left? hate the sport. Got, I just I'm still the learning dreams. the sport. Okay. Okay. So we're now we're doing Hoop Dreams, another basketball movie. I liked okay. Hoop Dreams okay. a lot. Okay. It was so, so good because it was a documentary. Yeah, it so was. Hold, a documentary. On, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> 1994. Mm-hmm. Hoop Dreams comes out. <laughs> This is the first documentary we've ever talked to, and one one day we will do a, just a whole documentary, a documentary podcast because yeah. we have to. Mm-hmm. As long as we can put some murder ones in there, <laughs> murder. Yeah, but ones. they're not going to be like crappy Netflix documentaries. <laughs> no, we're going to talk about Tiger King and the Natural Phenomenon. We're not though. talking. Yes! About, no, I am no. not talking about Tiger. No, I'm talking about actual By documentary the way, he's alive, films. So he's trying to get out of jail. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> uh, uh, the Wonderly podcast on that was phenomenal. I I, they were, I never even got into it when they were doing that. It, it was, was so big. fun to play a drinking but game that with. Was, but that was a COVID thing. It Everybody was a COVID. And that's why in that... It was here's a crazy the thing. time. It was a crazy time. That's why Amanda likes it, because she was out of her mind with COVID. <laughs> I never <laughs> had COVID. I know, but you were out of your mind at home. It's a crazy time. It was... It was anyway. <laughs> I just went just real quick, though. It was one of those worldwide phenomenons that you're like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. yeah. And it, so that's why. We were all stuck in the house. Yes. Very quickly. (laughs) See? We were all stuck in the house, and it was like, for like... Netflix is like here. For like two weeks, it was the only thing we had as a a people. As collective, yep. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. I would never watch it again. I'm not going to ever talk about it. (laughs) So, Hoop Dreams, 1994. So good. It's so... This, to me... Greatest documentary ever I made. Love, I love this documentary. This movie is so good. This movie is held in such high esteem, Manda. Roger Ebert said this was the best movie of 1994. Best movie, period. Period, out of mm-hmm. anything. 94 huh. was Forrest Gump, Pulp Fiction, Shawshank Redemption. Dang. Roger Ebert says this is the best movie of the year. It was. Okay. I will say it was long, but I mean, it covered, like, it followed four years. It followed such time. Not only that, Manda. When the decade of the 90s ended, Roger Ebert named his greatest movie of the entire decade, and he said it was this. Hoop Dreams. Which is insane. Think mm-hmm. of everything in the 90s that came I know. out. So many yeah. good things. Right? Yeah. And Roger Ebert, because it touched him so much, because he's like, this is like the mm-hmm. most real human. I mean, because it is a real documentary, but just like mm-hmm. story about life like I've ever seen. 
just the setup. I'll do the setup. So it follows these two kids in Chicago, uh, William Gates and Arthur Agee, and they're basically going from eighth grade to high school. That's Mm -hmm. where they are. And we meet them, and they're like, they're being scouted by a talent. And this whole time, we're going to follow their whole high school career every year. They get... um, they basically get scholarships to St. Joseph mm-hmm. Prep, which is a very famous basketball school in inner city Chicago. It's where Isaiah Thomas played. Um, Gene Pingator, who's like a legendary high school coach, was the coach of that team. And he's very prominently featured in the documentary. Mm-hmm. But it just basically follows their career the whole time and the ups and downs and no matter what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I just, I oh, go ahead. thought the saddest part of this movie was these kids being scouted, being sent to these schools that they physically couldn't afford and their yeah. families couldn't afford, getting a good education, getting to play basketball like they wanted to do. And then one got, like, literally can't go here and then gets sent to another school. Yeah, well, William Gates has, has, like, a patron who's paying yeah, for him to be Yeah, but not there. towards the end, though. No, well, and, and then Arthur literally gets kicked out of the first year. Yeah, so yeah because gets, his parents can't afford to pay. And, and it's just, that's, the, I think, to me, the saddest part of this movie. It is, movie. it's real. And that's how a lot of these things work because um, William Gates, he was a more promising player. So he got... He had base that he had found like a benefactor. Okay? Yeah, some they rich didn't white think lady. Arthur A. G. was developing, and his parents couldn't pay for the school anymore, and they mm-hmm. were misleading. They're like, well, "He's going to have a scholarship. He's going to go." Yeah, and that was well, so it's sad. like partial, and then it ends, and then now you're on the hook for thousands of dollars. So, and he can't even get his transcripts. No, and it hurts him. Like later on, he wants to graduate, and they won't release his transcripts till they pay like the outstanding bill. Yeah, and that was just to me. That's the saddest part of this whole movie. Is these kids just yeah. want to play so bad. They want to go to the NBA. It's the mm-hmm. dream. And like, um, but they get a chance, and then they're basically their dreams are just dashed because they don't have enough money. And these talent scouts are looking in the inner city where there is no money because mm-hmm. yep. the families talk about it over and over and over again in this documentary. How they don't have the money how they don't have lights on how they don't have food yeah and well and arthur's father like leaves and does drugs he's and like and yeah he's like a crack oh addict it was so in the course of the sad. movie he is there and then he leaves he's buying and drugs he, on the basketball court his kids playing basketball and then on. he comes like, back and it's like found jesus again um one thing that's not on the thing not in the film but their their lights get shut out and the film makers paid to Keep their electricity. Oh, I didn't know that the filmmakers paid to do yep. that. Okay. But yeah, there's no money. They got that cut off. That breaks the code of documentary film. Yeah, but it was like it? they really needed help. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. You, but there's no. Just, I mean, you just feel so bad. These kids just want to make it so bad. Well, if the filmmakers did that. Why didn't they just pay Arthur's? I mean, I think lights, lights payments tuition. versus no, he, tuition payments. A so little this movie was basically it was originally meant. He got like an $1,000 grant or something. It was originally meant to be a 30-minute thing on PBS. It was two guys who just did it on their own. Mm -hmm. They filmed it not with film. They filmed it on video camera. Um, They had to get permission from the coach, the school, the families for years. Like, it was on a shoestring, Mm -hmm. and it took years to make. Like, this movie came out in 94, and they started shooting this in, like, 87. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, because they follow the kids to college, even. right? Yep, yeah. And then, I mean, you feel so bad for William because he drops out, and then he goes back, and yeah. then Arthur goes to like a middle college, mm-hmm. junior college, junior yeah. college, and then goes he does on. Really well, he does. Then he goes on to play for a for a right goes to like a four year college, right. which is awesome. Yeah. He goes to Arkansas State. Yeah. So William Gates gets recruited pretty heavily in the movie to Marquette, which is a good mm-hmm. basketball school. Mm-hmm. Um, he ends up getting hurt and multiple times. Yeah. But, he, um, but after this, so both of these kids turned out good. So William Gates, he ended up, he dropped out, but he did graduate in 99. Um, and he became a pastor and he's got a foundation. Arthur Ag ended up playing. He went to a junior college then he went to Arkansas state and then he played like some independent ball and, um, he ended up setting up a foundation and stuff. So it was a positive thing in the end with both players um so that's good but just you've never seen a documentary like this that follows like yeah. four two, four to six years of yeah. these kids it's, lives it's essentially it really and is. it was really interesting to watch them grow up and how they started playing 
on the street in the courts, and then you get these people literally coming and be like, you need to go try here, and... Well, uh, and maybe, Ben, you know the answer to this question, because the coach at uh, St. Jo- St. Joseph, right? Gene uh, co- Pingator. Gene, Gene Pingator. I mean, his whole thing was he'd never won a state championship. Right? If not since Isaiah, right? Right, yeah. not since Isaiah. But if you would have cut both of them... I, I don't well, know. see, Ar- that's the thing. Like, Arthur wasn't at that level. That's why they let him go. Um, but then William l- seems to lose his confidence. He does, yeah, because he gets yeah. multiple knee injuries, yeah, and, and he just never recovered for them. Mm-hmm. But he was, like, one of their best players. If you read the backstory, the way they found the kids is they have this idea. Craig James, who directed the movie, he gets hooked up with Coach Pingator. Coach Pingator tells him about a talent scout. Mm-hmm. Talent scout takes him to like this, you know, out on the backyards and or the parks, and like they find Arthur Ag, and they're like, "We think he could be really good." So they work out with Arthur Ag's family. We're going to follow you. At first, they don't know it's going to be the four to- for the whole mm-hmm. time, and then Coach Pingator says, "Well, they're originally just going to do Arthur," and he says, "Well, I've got this kid, William Gates, coming in." He's like the next Isaiah Thomas. So then they decide to do both at once. Mm-hmm. And I'm really glad they did because it's such a great, yeah. you know, different differing paths. They have you different know? trajectories. Mm-hmm. In their, but in Arthur their doesn't turn out. Like he's not. So that's why they cut him loose. The thing is, if you're good enough, they'll find a way to pay for your school. Yeah. Right. And they didn't and think, they he just was. think he was. That public school basketball coach says, like, I see it all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and it's hard and... It's hard for him to graduate because St. Joe's is withholding his transcripts mm-hmm. until he pays, and like his mom lost, lost her job, and his dad's in jail, and mm-hmm. it's just you it's know. one thing after another, and these yeah. kids just want to play, and you yeah. you still see it to this day. Kids just want to play, oh. and it's just so sad and frustrating. It, you know, and eventually, William Gates and Arthur they go to like the regionals and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yep. William Gates' team loses, so Pingator loses that year. But Arthur's team goes. They all go the on. Way, yep. Yep. You know, in there, they're like they're not competing against each other. No. They're in way different school leagues. Right. But they he makes it all the way, and I that the, his team doesn't win that that year either. They end up getting third place, right? But yeah. still, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. From like the streets, essentially, because yeah. like they're a public school. There's no money. There's no nothing. But then here, they're taking it all the ways with their basketball. Mm-hmm. Well, and ultimately, both kids end up doing well. Yeah. Not necessarily the way that they not imagined them. Pro their basketball, lives going but well. that's not. Right. And I think that says something too. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's such a good movie. And again, it's not necessarily a movie about basketball. It's about. I think these I kids liked the story up. of the kids and yeah. like yeah, It's about the kids. Yeah. This basketball was part of it because that's what they wanted and that was their dream. Right, but it but was you a really re- re- interesting story watching them progress yeah. through the four years. But you could replace the basketball with anything, yeah, and with a different kid. Yeah. You know, it could be music career, or mm-hmm. it could be something where it's like, well, it could be mm-hmm. hockey players from mm-hmm. a small town, anything, or something like that, yeah. anything like that. Mm-hmm. But all. like this sort of stuff happens all over all the time, right? And, yeah, and you need. It's just, you know, normally you don't get this amount of time, this period Mm -hmm. of time, years. Yeah, usually you only get a couple years. You Mm -hmm. don't get four years. Or you would get, like, a one-hour documentary that covers four years but just doesn't show it like they do, Mm -hmm. you know? It's it's an amazing documentary. It's something that hadn't been seen. Yeah. Ten out of ten. uh, Yeah. It was, okay, so let's do the five. uh, So I'm going to go with um, five and a half for this one. I really love this movie. I'm going to say five. I'm going to say six. Same okay, as Field of Dreams. Six of the, is Field of Dreams. No, it was just, it was good. And I, I, I'm i glad I watched it. Yeah. It the really greatest helped. documentary of all time. Didn't even get nominated. And it's a whole scandal. Yeah. It wasn't even nominated mm. for best documentary. Can you anymore? believe? Nope. I'm good. <laughs> if you want to read why it didn't, just go to the Wikipedia page. I want to read, read Wikipedia. But it's like basically it, they had a, just a total crap wave. They, they were nominating the. the best documentaries back then it'd be like they'd have all these people in a theater who would vote and like if the movie if someone flashed a flashlight they would stop and people could like x out movies and the thing is it turns out when they looked at the tabulations what people were doing was they were basically voting for only the five they wanted to see nominated and giving every other movie like zero so it was skewing the results Mm -hmm. it was a huge scandal it changed the way they voted Mm -hmm. nominated these movies because of this because you know 
Well, and here's the thing. I mean, I, really, what it should have been is should have been nominated for Best Picture, not Best Actor. People, people pitched for it at the time. Yeah. I think Ebert, and they were like, this should be, but it's a documentary. They're like, well, it's in the documentary category, which I understand, but... You well, know, it's sort of like them wanting to nominate Beauty and the Beast or or Little Mermaid or something like that. Yeah, but at and the then time, they go out and create a new right. category. But for best there was documentary. a documentary category at the time. Yeah. Unlike Beauty and the Beast, there wasn't one. But it should. It should. I'm sorry. It, it should have sh- been. It should have picture. It should have been nominated for best picture, and it should have won one best, best documentary. Best documentary, but yeah. I mean, one best movie. picture. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, mm-hmm. it was ninety four. Ninety four was chock full of stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was su- such a good movie. Okay, well, um, there you have it, faithful listeners. I know this is an hour and a half now. Are, so I, are we? It's in over. An no, hour I think an hour. We started like at twelve. I'm looking 40. at the time that I'm recording. Oh, okay. It's an hour and thirty. We had some interruptions. Yes. We did. So there you go. That's the word from Amanda Pierce from the Teen Zone, Ben Sargent from Tech Services, and myself on sports movies that show us all how to go the distance. Yeah, yeah. And the greatest sports movie of all time, you know. Um, Anyway, but I can't let you uh, hit the nerd locker rooms just yet, guys. Um, We need to do one more thing. We need to talk about books that have been keeping us up at night and distracting us during the day. It's a little thing on the podcast we call Off the Shelf. All right, guys, what have you been reading that's good? I'm looking at it up. Uh, I'm reading, I'm almost done with it. Um, it's book one, mm-hmm. The Arboros, called Godly Heathens by H.E. Edgman. Godly Edmund. Heathens, yes. okay. Um, it follows a non binary indigenous person named Jem who lives in the small town of Georgia, like super religious, conservative, but they're non binary. Um, really interesting character. Um, come to find out, they're gods. Oh, from the Arboros, which is another spoiler word. alert. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it tells you in the oh, okay. in the All it right. tells you in the thing, and um, basically what's happening is they've lived multiple lives since leaving the the other place, mm-hmm. and now it's all coming to a head. Okay. Um. So this is the first. In this the is the st- first, and the second one is we have it downstairs. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but no, it's Berkeley's waiting for it. Cause I'm Berkeley. Almost, um, I saw she was on the podcast. She was. Yeah, she was. Uh, yes. Yeah. But no, it is really interesting um, because there's a lot of interesting characters in it. Um, they all, all you'll, you'll meet different gods and they all have different strengths and they're different. Like there's like the cyclone in the mountain and it's just. It's really interesting. Okay. Um, so, Godly Heathens, and what was the author's name? H.E. Uh, Edmund. H.E. Edmund. Edge, edge, Edmund. Edgemund? Okay. Here. H.E. Okay. Yeah, it's got to be Edgemund. Yeah, it's got to okay. be Edgemund. All right. Really good. I'm enjoying it. All right. All right, Ben, what have you been reading? Okay, so um, I don't have a current book, but I'm going to give a recommendation for a sports book. Okay. Mm. One of the best sports books I ever read. It's a nonfiction book. It just came in the book drop one day. This was years ago, probably over 10 years ago. Um, It's called Iron War. Dave Scott, Mark Allen, and the Greatest Race Ever Run. It's about the formation of the Ironman Triathlon. Okay. How How it came to be. And, like, the two, like, kind of main people... And then they were, like, on a collision course, like, who would be the greatest triathlete. I can't not recommend this book. I've recommended this to so many patrons. For some reason, I saw it. I read the jacket. It was new. And I was like, this is interesting because I don't know anything about the Iron Man triathlon. Mm-hmm. Only that I would never do it. It's <laughs> intense. Because we lived in Wisconsin and Madison, Wisconsin, and they were a host city. And I would just, like, yeah. we're avoiding downtown. So they swim, like, two and a half miles. And then they, they bike. bike. 50, I no, think. it's like 100 miles. Oh, 100? And yeah, then they run a wild. marathon. All in one day. All, yeah, yeah, consecutively. And Ooh. it's a huge thing. But it's such an interesting, the way the author tells the story, it's just so, I can't recommend this book enough. But, like, if you like sports movies, I think you will really like, I want this to be a movie. Iron War. Uh, Iron War. The All library right. has it. Um can't recommend it enough. All right. And the only book that I've read recently was Tom Lake by um, Ann Patchett. Mm. Loved it. It's set in Michigan um, around this uh, this um, creative uh, uh, thing that happened in the summer. It's very much based on Interlochen. Yeah. So 
<clears throat> and it's all about this young woman who goes there to play in our town. So the pl- the play Our Town plays a big part in it. And this is a really oversimplification, but I love Ann Patchett. I think she's amazing, amazing, the Dutch house. And, uh, you know, I've read so many of her books. Um, so Tom Lake, you can't get your hands on it right now. It just comes and goes out, comes and goes well, out. Because it's for a book club. Well, it is for a book club, but even before oh, it was okay. chosen for a book club, gotcha. you just you just can't keep your hands on it. So um, that's my recommendation. Okay, so there you go. Um, some recommendations from Amanda, Ben, and myself on books that you should pick up. Off the shelf. And we have finally come to... Oh, you want to say something? Well, I'm just going to... A little teaser. Okay, all right. When we're back here next... Yes. We're going to have a special guest. Oh, I have this in my closing. Oh, oh, oh. well, let's not spoil the guest. Let's just tease the guest. You want me to just tease that? Okay, go ahead and tease the guest. Well, so the guest is someone who is very knowledgeable on the topic. Should Mm -hmm. we even say the topic? Yeah, say say the topic. It's going to be... Alfred Hitchcock movies. Right. We have the very best person that yep. you could get for and this. And this person has been on the podcast in the first season of the podcast. So it's a return for all the people who <laughs> love the the lore yes. of the podcast. But very excited. We've been trying to make this happen. We finally got it locked down. We cannot wait. It's this person, be- I, I worked with them. One mm-hmm. of the best who ever worked here, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, and I'm so excited because that'll be the best podcast we and, ever do. And We're going to have to do it like in the evening or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and this person has been a friend of mine for even before I started working at the library. And yeah. so. their kids are amazing. Yes. Yes. So. And I, Amanda, I did tell them that <laughs> you would make a special board. Oh, oh wow! So not Ooh. to pressure, but what are you going to put on it? Okay, but no. Board? Here, here's the thing: if we're going to do this, we're going to do it right. We're going to have a themed cocktail. Wow! And we're gonna if I if I'm going out for a board, we are gonna go all out. All right, we'll have to record at someone's house in the evening <laughs> so there can be adult. Wow, it's it's ballooning into something huge. Well, now. I think we should record it here, but I think we should record it maybe. Maybe we could record it in Dandelion Cottage or something. I don't yeah. think we need to drink, drink. But I'm saying, because um, those I'm those ones, drink, drink, yeah, but those ones just go off the rails. Yeah, that would. Go One off the special rails. cocktail is not going to go off the rails. They just go off the rails. Right. But anyways, <laughs> so look forward to that because yeah, have we hyped exactly. it up enough? I think you have. All right. So, but I really want to thank Amanda Pierce from the Teen Zone, Ben Sargent from Tech Services, for joining me in the Nerd Locker Room today. Uh, but never fear, as Ben and Amanda uh, are always coming back for more. We have we have an endless idea uh, ideas of what to do with the movie podcast. And as Ben just teased, we're going to be doing Alfred Hitchcock next with a special guest nerd. Anyway, but come back next week when I will be sitting down for a conversation with one of everyone's favorite library nerds, Anne Donahue, the outgoing president of the PW Board of Trustees. We love her. We are going to miss her as president of the board. She's been a great leader for her time here and seen us through a lot of a lot of things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's we all love her here. So until that time next week, everyone, stay nerdy. Thank you for listening to Library Nerds with Words, Peter White Public Library's weekly podcast, giving you the word on what's cool at the library. The theme for the podcast is Happy Clappy by John Bartman, used courtesy of Pixabay. This episode was written and produced by Martin Ackett's and sponsored by Peter White Public Library. Until next week, pick up a good book, listen to some good music, Watch a good movie, attend a great event, and remember, library nerds are the coolest people around.